mentioned that uh, it would be very nice to have uh, a, a round table where we can discuss uh, and have background to make between the statement and the scenario gallery. So uh, I'm going here promoting the discussion and uh, uh, trying to bring uh, some topics that should be the part of this webinar. So um, in my in my position, I am going to, to make a brief uh, presentation of colleagues and thank them for being here. Of Shandala Gamets from the School of Law of the Fibre University. It's, it's been working for a long time in environmental law uh, and she has a, a lot of research on environmental law, environmental justice, ecosystem service, what waste law and environmental things. Juan Martinez Provisco uh, from the University of Laguna. Uh, and he comes from the Department of Cognitive, Social, and Organizational Psychology with interest in social psychology and risk analysis, environmental ethics, and relationships uh, to sustainability. Susana Palma Gomez, who is last meeting to be the, the last uh, comes from the Faculty of Psychology of Lisbon as Professor of Environmental Psychology, specialist in risk analysis management and on risk perception is one of its focus with a large work on the environmental and the underlying right now a large debate about the gender thing. Sophia uh, gets class in the uh, seminar and uh, her presentation and is an activist uh, right now demonstrating the impact of climate change and sustainability. So uh, after this brief presentation uh, I try to I try to have some some Topics that uh, I was uh, I was uh, yesterday tried to get some um, some over overview of the of the, the different the different ways of, of doing it. So uh, one topic that uh, uh, and Sophia mentioned this it's uh, how can we deal right now about risk management and uh, about the discussion, for instance, about climate change. Uh, uh, I think there is a gap with what uh, we have been working about environmental ethics and uh, the topics that uh, right now are very close, but in the opposite way. Uh, right as human safety, environmental crisis, and human values. So I, I think there are there is an evolution between what is the concept from uh, 20 years ago about environmental ethics and what we can right now about risk uh, management very close to human safety and uh, human values and uh, now the crisis as you mentioned, urgency of crisis. And I think that's the, that uh, we should mention that we need a balance uh, about this point. Another provocative uh, uh, question that uh, I was very concerned about this, it's about climate change, and I, I was talking with uh, Annabelle about some moments. Uh, about uh, um, climate change. For instance, in the national broad of uh, climate change adaptation, I always feel uh, there, are, there, there is a large tension 
about uh, models of the focus. Uh, a sectorial focus about climate change adaptation, very based on the <coughs> multi center position. Another topic is on local based approach and local based policies. And uh, another uh, way of doing this, and maybe this is the broad of this, this kind of uh, uh, meeting, the people center or user center. So, uh, Annabella is not here. Oh, is there? I, I always uh, felt a large uh, gap and tension because about climate change, for instance, adaptation politics, about the different perspectives about this. Multi-centered, very close to the sectoral economic uh, interest, and the other topics about the people and community centers. And there are some reasons about this. Uh, and the reasons are uh, a low understanding of the local uh, practice. Uh, some gaps about uh, some gaps about uh, the way of doing this, about the common terminology about this, and uh, uh, the discussion about uh, the background base. It's not a consensus about this, and when we discuss this, the tension is becoming a lot. The last provocative. Uh, way of doing this, it's uh, something that um, from the last 10, 10 years from the school of German <laughs> Dutch school and some, some central Europe school about risk governance, uh, we, we, uh, we made an, um, a framework that communication is the center of the risk problems. But for now, uh, there are emerging a different way of doing this. In a uh, multi-level uh, way of thinking, the risk problems right now is very formal. And this, uh, this perspective, very formal, uh, very centered in the, in the decision, uh, only promoted small uh, windows of the discussion. So uh, we, we came from uh, a model, a risk problems model, where the center is the, the risk communication, for a different model, very formal, where the, the stakeholders, public participation has narrow opportunities to, uh, to be involved. And this is an evolution for the last five, five years. So we are coming for different, uh, different approaches. And, and this is a discussion when we get the old information, all the discussion about climate change in, 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 in the world. The, the supporting of public, uh, public policies about this, this is, there are a uh, big change, a uh, big change about this. So this is now uh, some points that could be framed the, the discussion, and I give the, the, the floor for the invite. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, invitation. Um, to share uh, our humble knowledge and more mind of the shoes. Um, and it's a pleasure to be the first time in Coimbra City. I come from, from La Laguna University, from Tenerife Island, probably one of the most beautiful islands in the world. <laughs> My, uh, I tried Knowing the, the round table uh, and, the, and the, the 
the title of the, of the meeting, the citizen commitment. Uh, I tried to, to explain in, in briefly uh, social participation, environmental risk management. Basically, in the, as a social psychology, as, as I am, uh, in the social, uh, in the psychology, psychology process. Uh, first, we are here. This is one of the, we started uh, one of the catastrophes in the world. Uh, and this is the, the present. This is the present. This is the climate change, the crisis, and this is in Canaria. We have the, dry, the drilling oil. We have a, a, a very, very important catastrophe. And the, how the how the how the people how the people organize uh, were organizing uh, to stop the the drilling oil. And at the end, the company stopped the, the action. Uh, this is uh, how how the people try to also defend you they are interested and it's important that are their values that they are done. So uh, the, the classical approach or Wonderman Wondersman is trying to, to explain how the how the, 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 the knowledge of the mental problems in the, in the social participation is a is direct is the, is the process that are involved in law of many citizens, many people uh, worry about the about the World about the uh, and what means really the social participation uh, or the citizen participation? Literally, the people in our citizen are increase the economy of the environment, the environment. You need somebody uh, and promote the effects satisfaction many times. That's what they are positive. This is what one of the. Uh, Social, social commitment, social involvement. If, uh, we, we can, we can, uh, we can see how, how the class uh, implication is spontaneous. Many times it's spontaneous. It's, it's very, uh, very an action uh, I, I would like because the, the time is, is uh, very short. But I would like only. To present in different by different dimensions, um, um, uh, one of them, not all, but one of them for me is uh, the social commitment uh, uh, and the information because it's a way we are trying to, to explain how the, the information is important and how the, the communication is important to, to the society. And uh, basically, the emotion, emotions. Uh, this is was an, uh, an, an a protest uh, recently in, in, the, in the 2019, in May. Uh, how the Portuguese and Spanish uh, protest against the running mine uh, by uh, an Australian an Australian company trying to, to introduce a new in, in, the, in, the, in the beautiful beautiful area. Uh, how to try to Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. It was very, very important how, how the two, two, two uh, different uh, at the different part of the border. One is in Villanueva, the Fresno is very, very close to the to the border of the of the Portugal border. And uh, how Portuguese and Spanish uh, also and, and, and share uh, and share a common action to, to stop. It was a caravan from uh, for another another action. Sixty hundred uh, cars, uh, hunching and the, 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 the sirens for, from the uh, from their cars, trying to or oh, oh, and to, uh, to stop an, an, an asphalt plant, an, an, a beach plant, uh, in, in, a, in a green area. It was a, an, a, 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 it was the great region on TV, uh, Extremadura, from the Uranium Mine, how, how the media uh, shared, the, shared the, the, notes, the news. It was the asphalt plant.
and it, it was the, how the another another process of the communication was uh, another theory which is very very known theory about the social risk uh, uh, social amplification of risk from 1992 Casperson uh, made a, this uh, new theory uh, in, in fact it's different it, it's very difficult to to put uh, uh, on it on the, on the ground but in theory is uh, is how uh, how shall uh, any events uh, with samples and when I age is uh, fine in, 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 uh, interpreted uh, by, 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 the, by the people, by uh, institutions, by politicians, by individuals, how the spreading path, uh, <coughs> in, in, in the, the case of the running mind, how, how, the, how the people try to, to think about the new or a new catastrophe, a new threat on the, on the land, um, and how the time of, of, of impact. It, it says, uh, as, a, as a theory, it's a, it's a good theory, but, but in practical, it's very, very difficult to work. Uh, okay, this is um, how, how uh, the, the news of the paper in, in, in New York uh, collected uh, about the, the, the problem of, of, of the, the towers, the tower four, uh, yeah. and how uh, one of the uh, the problem was uh, not trying to to uh, to a terrorist attack, you know, trying to why the, the, the tower fall, but what tower fell to fell down uh, because the, the test about fire uh, failed. Um, okay. I would like to finish uh, my time explaining uh, two, 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 uh, two questions. Oh, first question is which should be the role of the of the citizens in the taking decisions that affect them? What be? The second one, citizens should help the politicians even the, the taking decision even for those the, the technical knowledge are, are limited. Uh, and that one, which should be the profile of a person involved uh, with the uh, environmental action? Which should be, which, which is the, the profile? It's, uh, it's com as a, as a frugality, as uh, uh, talk about frugality, we are in, in, in La Laguna, a project about uh, frugality, focus on, on food. Um, the person uh, involved in, 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 in this type of action are involved in the rest of the, of the, of the, of the sphere, of the, the, the ambit, which it should be in this profile. Um, and which, which should be the, the role of the uh, social scientist? This is a, a very broad uh, question, but we try to discuss uh, after the. the, the Uh, well, trying to um, address some of the questions that were raised here on how we can deal with risk management, and then the second one on climate change and on risk governance. Uh, my reflections um, are on the relevance of risk issues uh, for the more global discussion of the ways uh, of how society is organized and how uh, we use a science and uh, when I say science I mean different sciences not just a technical uh, uh, scientific uh, the, the, the tech science but also the soft sciences the, the social sciences uh, and how we use science to address uh, these issues and uh, from what I have heard until now, namely uh, in the keynote uh, speakers' uh, um, ideas and uh, also the colleagues' uh, ideas that were presented now, uh, I think that we uh, all have to recognize, first of all, the importance of the social, uh, of social sciences uh, for the study of risk issues. This seems to be uh, a very uh, obvious conclusion of our discussions. 
so we should move from a, a very uh, merely technical approach to an approach with, which tries to combine uh, both um, uh, both uh, uh, scientific uh, uh, both areas of science. Uh, and um, well, the, the, the second and uh, most uh, important. Uh, uh, statement that I would like to propose for reflection uh, is the fact that risk governance, risk management is in fact a mere pretext, a pretext for discussing the more, uh, uh, the, the deepest problems of society. Uh, the, the, the problems, I mean ideological problems, racial problems, uh, uh, wealth problems uh, and uh, the way wealth is shared in society, this can be discussed in different moments and in diff with different pretexts. It can be discussed during election time, for instance. It should, election time should be the, the, the prime time for discussing the way society is organized and what should be changed to make it a fairer society, a more democratic society. But what we are seeing now is that risk management and risk governance is an excellent pretext to make us all rethink the way society is organized and how we should move on to a more democratic and more sustainable society. So uh, I think that this statement would be phrased something like this, uh, risks are uh, a, a, an excellent uh, moment or an excellent excuse, an excellent justification to uh, discuss the, the broadest uh, social issues of social fairness and uh, democracy, transparency, and so on. Um, and in fact, uh, I think that uh, the differences, uh, the different approaches to, to, to risk, uh, be it uh, the approaches from scientists coming from different backgrounds, or the approaches from the political sectors, or uh, even the individual, the citizen, the, the, the ordinary citizen who is not a specialist in the field, uh, it is uh, very strongly dominated by uh, their own ideologies, by their own uh, worldviews and personal conceptions of uh, what is a good life and what is a sustainable uh, life lifestyle. And these uh, different views should be brought up to the discussion because, uh, in fact, they uh, condition uh, not just the strategies to address uh, the, the problems, as you said, the solutions, not just the solutions, but in condition, uh, at the very beginning, the recognition of the very existence of risk. This is very obvious for climate change, some people are deniers, uh, uh, well, uh, happily it's uh, a smaller number, but you know, it seems that it has grown somewhere. Uh, so, um, the, the very existence of risk uh, can be uh, um, a strong uh, object of a strong discussion uh, conditioned by these different backgrounds. Uh, also, the terminology which has been uh, discussed here, or, or uh, the, the example of the newspaper uh, changing terminology, also uh, must be discussed uh, in um, having in mind these different uh, backgrounds and so different views and approaches to risk management uh, and of course uh, different also in what concerns the causes of risks. Uh, what people, some people might think that it is a, a, a natural cause and it is in fact a human cause. Uh, some would say no, it, this is absolutely inevitable, in, inevitable, we cannot uh, change the way things are and the way uh, the, the economic uh, production uh, functions. Uh, so the causes of risk uh, can also be uh, felt very differently by uh, different uh, stakeholders. Uh, and this is the reason why I think uh, that it is so important uh, to uh, bring to, to, to the discussion the question of uh, communication, risk communication and environmental communication uh, because in fact 
uh, we cannot uh, speak the same language. Uh, we must be aware that there are different languages and we all must bring uh, them to the discussion uh, and uh, recognize that uh, there is no silver bullet to solve uh, the different uh, risk issues. We have seen this in Portugal with the forest fires and we are fortunately now seeing it in Brazil as well. Uh, there is no single solution to solve this very, very complex problem uh, with different causes uh, and, uh, of course, different uh, solutions. Uh, so I think that our contribution, uh, as well we are all more or less specialists uh, in the field, uh, in this uh, field of risks, uh, would be to acknowledge the, this uh, importance of having different uh, views and trying to put them all uh, together in discussing uh, the, 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 the problem, which is a common problem of uh, managing risks effectively and in a fair way uh, to reach a more sustainable uh, living, uh, uh, more sustainable living despite of different ideologies, different uh, economic uh, status, different uh, races, I don't know, everything which can condition uh, the way uh, we think. Uh, and this should be put at the individual level, uh, as uh, Sophie has presented it, uh, more at the individual um, attitude and, and uh, behavioral, uh, an individual behavioral change, or as has been said here, more at the collective level, uh, uh, groups, associations, communities, and of course also at the political level. So in the different levels, uh, these uh, different uh, views and approaches should uh, be put to, to, to talk together and there should be a common uh, background, a common t terminology of course, but uh, recognizing that it's not uh, possible to put uh, everyone to think the same way and we have to agree on these uh, differences to reach a, a workable and acceptable solution for our uh, problems. I, I think, um, as Alexandra says, it, it, the, 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 the environmental problems we have now, they really challenge our system. And they challenge our political system and they challenge above all our economic system. And this is a, a taboo, uh, a, a taboo uh, issue for for most of us, uh, for all of us, because uh, we don't want to challenge our economic system. And uh, none of this will be ever solved if the economic system continues as it is uh, now. Um, so. That's why I'm echo depressed. Uh, because in, in the end, uh, uh, and, and it's very hard on, on, on environment. Because also there, either, either, either you are, a, either if you are a radical, <coughs> or uh, like uh, if you, if you live environmentalism uh, uh, fully then you are a radical and no one, you know, you, you'll be marginalized. Oh, okay, you are one of those that... Uh, da, da, da. Or uh, if you are an environmentalist, then you do just something. And, or, or you are a hypocrite because you talk about environment but then you don't live up to it. Uh, and we are in the middle of these two extremes. And this is very, also very unfair because either you are in the system or outside the system, and you're never okay. Uh, because if you marginalize, it's because you marginalize. If you are talking about it but not living it, then you are a hypocritical person. And there is this, um, and, and it should be, we, we, could, we could be, and, and we are contradictory persons, and we are, and it's part of life, we cannot uh, live fully. It's like being a vegetarian or not vegetarian. It's, Vegetarian or not vegetarian, but in environment, in, in, on environment, you cannot be environmentalist or not environmentalist. There is like a rule, and to, for some things you go in, in one way or, or uh, in the other way. I don't know why I'm talking about this, it's because I think it's very unfair. But basically, uh, what Alexander was saying is that all these problems, they pose, pro they pose bigger problems than what we are solving and uh, um, ideological problems. 
And what I think we we never discussing is the the, 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 the economic system we have and what what it uh, makes us do. And we will never solve any environmental problems. We can just you know. Then again, perhaps we don't need to solve them. We just need to manage them. Uh, and, but we have to be comfortable with that idea that we're not solving it, we're just managing the better uh, we can. But while we don't, and, and we're not ready to challenge our economic system at all. Um, I'm not ready, and I, none of us uh, is ready. So this uh, will be uh, very difficult for the for climate change. So it's really good to be Greta and to be 17 years old and to talk about this with this heavy charge that we have as adults and as scientists and uh, um, we have a, a, an enormous charge on us that makes us being rational and efficient in the way we talk about things. And what I think Greta and it is wonderful is that she's 17 and she's saying we have a problem uh, and I don't know how to solve it, but we have a problem and we have to do something about it. And this is very refreshing uh, because it makes us think on another perspective. Um, yes, it's like the, 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 the king is naked. This is what she's saying, and this, uh, this, is, this is really nice. So do, do you know what is going to happen on the 27th of September? No. Does anyone know what is going to happen on the 27th of September? <laughs> yeah, and this is amazing because uh, this will be the, the, the big, the, the big, the big, uh, the big uh, strike day for all students in the world. But they are asking us adults to strike as well. And if it didn't come across you yet, and uh, it's already in 20 days, and uh, uh, she's not doing the proper job. That's perhaps because she's silent and everybody is complaining that she said on a very rich, yeah. Anyway, I have nothing to say, sorry. It's your floor. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here in Coimbra. The last time that I was here talking, well, not last time, I was in pharmacy, but I was almost killed by my colleagues on the Coimbra University because I was discussing a technology fix that was not accepted by the people in Coimbra. It was a risk stuff, perception stuff. Now, uh, the devil is on the detail. The, my my, my uh, most uh, preeminent characteristic is that I am old. I was 15 years president of Quercus, the, and uh, I was, uh, had a lot of responsibilities in the environment movement. I was a partner foundation of uh, Zero movement also, and I was 15 years as an expert on European Commission on environmental issues and directives and so on. Then I was an activist, I'm a scientist, and uh, then I behaved politically, and I was engaged in SRA, I'm a member of SRA for 20 years, and uh, it's very difficult to put all the hats together. And uh, first of all, risk analysis is not about only about environmental problems. For instance, uh, we have a big problem in, in the world today, for instance, for women, mammography and the excess of uh, uh, tests that provoke a lot of problems in, in uh, women and men and so on. And nobody talked about that, and it is important to talk about that in risk communication and risk involvement. Then, risk analysis and risk management is not only about environment. That is very important that we understand what we are talking about. Second, also it's very important to distinguish, that's the whole thing that all my students know, between science and technology. And we mix that stuff again. Let's imagine that now I'm talking about, I'm giving you arguments in order to you agree with me. This is a process. Then I put my arguments forward, and then in order to analyze this system, I can discuss if my arguments are good, uh, what are they producing or not, what, and then I can do it in several ways. I can do it scientifically, 
analyze what if I'm using the arguments like Aristotle's and social psychology would say, that is an, a scientific analysis of this debate. We can do that. We can bring sociology and psychology and analyze this as a debate. Another thing and is that I can use the principles of sociology and psychology in order to be better in my communication. That's technology. One thing is science, another thing is technology. And risk science is a technology. Why? Because when we analyze a problem, we analyze a technology, we analyze a solution, we always bring ethic and values in it. It's impossible to analyze one technical solution without have embedded values. That's what we have 20 years ago when we have pro uh, uh, put a lot of technology innovation in people saying, no, no, that's invalid, that's a lot, that's a lot of... The, always the technical solution has embedded values. That brings a question that Sophia brought, that about ethics. There is no discussion in the actual society that does not have ethics included. Everything is ethics included. A mammography has an ethics included. Because when the women go to the mammography, they don't are clear about the risks that are in court, and the medical doctors don't explain that, and they don't have an informed decision. Then everything, the decision about the airport in Lisbon is an ethical decision because they're going to choose, they are choosing, and they are choosing the bad solution. The very bad solution for environment and for health of the people. Then, when we do a risk analysis and we do a risk management, we do value. Then that's why we need people. Because usually, what we put in the values in the risk management options is the values that are pre-organized the ones that are framed by the people that have in power. And they have a lot of health implications and so on for the people that are suffering those options. Then, for a long time ago, in the risk management, and it's very interesting to do risk communication. Please, risk communication. When we talk about risk communication, we always think, okay, risk communication, then we have a message, and then we have to communicate that message. But who's organized the message? The message is full of technical and values. And then the people don't accept the message because they don't construct the message by itself in the conclusion. And it is important to understand that we have to do risk communication, yes, but without risk communication. We have to. Why I don't believe in what people would say? Why the people in Coimbra 20 years ago didn't give a shit about what I was saying? I was doing risk communication. I was saying that there is no danger for the lot, for health. But the people didn't believe me. Why? Because I, already, I was giving a message. They didn't construct the message with me. That's his involvement. The involvement is the fact that we have to construct the message because there are two different things when we have a risk message. The first thing is that I don't believe in the guy that is giving the message. I don't trust the government. I don't trust the guys that are politicians. That is what we call in scientific terms procedural fairness. That is, there is no, I don't perceive that was a fair process. You are imposing an airport, you are imposing a waste treatment, and so on. Then I don't accept that because you are imposing, then I don't trust you. And then we have the risk issues. Then we have the health perception and the contamination and the environmental problems. The problem is, we don't accept the solution, the technical or scientific solution, unless we have the trust before. What is the purpose that I do a risk analysis, and I'm doing a lot, I did a lot of risk analysis, health, dioxins, and so on, in biology, and then I bring to the community and say, this is my health risk analysis, 
And my conclusion is that my emissions of dioxins are uh, only um, getting higher, probably one in a million. That is negligible. We can, we don't need to worry because there is no effect on health. But why? That's our numbers. That are te technological bullshit. Because people don't understand how risk analysis is done. People don't understand, they don't construct it, they don't trust you. And more, they don't trust scientists, by the way. Because when you are evaluated me, or evaluated one of my colleagues, you, as I do, we always evaluate it according to two dimensions. One is competence. Another one is uh, being cold or being, uh, you know, warm. What happened is that in the perception, that's why women have a big problem when they want to work on society because the stereotype that people have from women is that they are warm but they are not competent. And the scientists, the stereotypes that we have in our society is that you, you, the scientists are competent but they are cold. Okay? Now, if I go and I present a bunch of numbers that I do, I'm a risk analysis too, and I do present the stuff to a certain communities like Joan has presented, then people don't believe me because they don't understand the assumptions, they don't create the stuff. And then in order to involve people when they are interested, and they are interested, believe me, people are interested when the stuff, like Wimber showed 20 years ago, they are interested when they perceive that something is menacing. Okay? They are always impressed. Another thing that we have to be very clear is that the devil is on the detail. And when we are talking about environmental change, we at the same time we are talking about recycling and we are talking about CO2 in the world. And that is very complicated because how we deal with these levels of behavior. And then when we discuss, we mix a lot. And we make a lot of mix. And, and people sometimes don't understand what they have to do because it's too uh, abstract. Now, we have to separate it, but I don't want to go again to the environmental problem. Environmental problems is only one problem of the risk management issue and the risk analysis issue. Now, coming back to, the, to the, what I said, how to involve people. First, people normally are involved when they feel that health and their, uh, uh, their life is at risk. Then the more near the problem, for instance, people don't even understand, because that doesn't go that in the news, how the movements, the local movements in Portugal to uh, motorways construction. They don't go to the, to the newspapers. But the people, when you impose a road in their village, they, they make manifestation, they do a lot of stuff and so on. That doesn't appear on the, on the news. But I have people, I have studies on that, where, uh, in, for instance, in the Autostar to Algarve, where uh, we are constructing road over there, we're constructing the road, and then I have people that get in depression, people that want to kill the engineers from the, the EP, then when the, the problem is near you, you are involved. Now, how to overcome that? You have to give control to the people. That's the problem. You have to give not only information. Information is top down. I have the information. I have the power. You have to convince. No, I have to create with the people a shared knowledge. Then I have to define, I have to organize what to do, and do experiments with people. Do the things with people. When I do a risk analysis in Tunisia, in Brazil, or in Portugal, I'm not doing the risk analysis and then present the results. I discuss with my community where I have a contract, and I say, if I have bad results, or if I have bad emissions, and so on, I'm going to stop this. I give power to the people. They have to trust in the process. And what is interesting to you is that 
bullshit about the people that have PhDs or whatever. I work with people in North Africa that don't even know how to read. They don't even know how to write Arabic. But they understand a very interesting thing, like you understand. One thing is control and another thing is experimental. Then, if I do something, I want to do something, and they, then people have to get involved in the process, and they understand when I am using this or when I am not using that. And it is great. And I do the emissions, I do science, I do the risk analysis with people, give them control. They go there every day. Every day. I have village in south of Tunisia, in the most uh, damaged and polluted city in the Mediterranean, that is Gabez. And the people go there, the villagers go there to see the, the concentration of our pollution. And when I do the risk analysis, they know what I'm doing and they exactly understand what I'm doing. Not presenting the result, presenting the process. And one thing that Alexandra and I would probably agree is that in Portugal, because of that bad experience in 97, we are regret uh, uh, regressing. We are regressing in public participation. In 20 years ago, we have a formal uh, process of public participation. You remember that we, can, we have to discuss, was bad, yes, but was obligatory. Now we know that we can do it better. Now, and now with the law, because of those conflicts and how the, 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 the government was not able to solve those conflicts, then the law gets lower and lower. That is, now the, the, the discussion is, is not mandatory, it's not organized, then actually in Portugal we are regressing in the way that you do public stuff. That, that's why your document, our document, would be important, that is, would press exactly uh, uh, because in 2019 we cannot, we have to have a global uh, uh, involvement process. Then, um, another, yes, the, 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 to finalize, uh, then another thing, well, no, I, 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 I keep it short. Uh, all these ideas are published in my last paper on Journal of uh, Risk Analysis uh, in 2018, where I tried to put forward uh, a theory of involvement that say, basically, first, you cannot discuss science and technology unless the people are trust, trust in you. Then first, you have to go over the feelings that people have about procedural unfairness in order after that you can discuss science. In order, then don't do risk communication by itself. Because if you just do risk communication by, your, by themselves, the people immediately know what are the values they discuss the values and they trust not the conclusion. You have to create science with people. You have to create the solutions with people. And one thing is about, oh, by the way, this is very complex. Uh, for instance, probably uh, in uh, Sofia, a, a environmental engineer, uh, the solutions of environment are really Complex. I give an example. Producing cereals in Alentejo, it's very bad for the environment. Producing cows in Alentejo in an extensive way can be better for the environment. That is not applied to Amazonia, and that is not applied to the Central America. Then, the specific solutions are very bad. The global solution uh, very complex. The global solutions are very bad too. For instance, the best solution for environmental problems is a CO2 tax. 
when I was 15 years in the European Commission as an as a expert, it was impossible. See Macron in France. It was the most single shot, single silver bullet solution, a CO2 tax. Easy. Easy. You don't pay the tax on the hill, you pay by the kilometers, you do. It's very easy. It's the best single way of reducing CO2. Where is the CO2 tax? It's very complicated. And you say, it's the politicians. No. I bet my life that you would never like to be a politician because it's a very complicated. This guy was a politician. Oh, I was a politician. I was, I was. I, was. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know this guy for 20 years. I was a politician in the environmental movement. It is very compli complicated. For instance, when I was president of Quercus, conciliating all the dimensions on the nuclear, in the, 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 the Quimbra, the guys, the port, and so on. Even inside an environmental organization, you have to do a lot of balances and, and checks and equilibrium. Then when I see a politician, I say, good, I'm going to uh, drink a, a whiskey or a <laughs> Thank you. I rest my case.